hello guys uh, welcome to my youtube channel uh, today i thought to speak something about uh, the uk chartered right uh, so uh, you know uh, chartered uh, you can get from the institution of civil uh, civil engineers in united kingdom uh, that is an international chartered uh, and uh, uh, now after obtaining this chartered qualification some of my uh, friends colleagues and my juniors uh, they were asking me how to do this so each and every time uh, i was going to give them some descriptive details how to do that so but i thought that if i do some kind of uh, youtube video so that will be very much beneficial to them so i'm going to tell you today how to get the uk chartered engineer qualification right first of all uh, we'll go to the ice website ice.org.uk right uh, now this is the ICE website right uh, if you are going to apply for your chartered qualification first you have to get the graduate membership so what you can what you have to do is you can uh, go to this join ICE and then under the join the ICE uh, there are some descriptions how to become a member membership grades and IC professional qualifications so first of all I'll just show you the membership grades now when it comes to membership grades there there is this civil engineer I inch or C inch mice uh, and graduate member student member fellow technician member associate member infrastructure engineer and things right so if you are just following a civil engineering course uh, in a Sri Lankan university you are eligible for the student member now one thing I have to tell you is that a student member it is free so that will be very much beneficial for you right uh, because you know uh, by joining a professional organization like ICE gives you passage for uh, professional exposure with uh, chartered engineers fellows and the industry leaders right uh, that is if you are going to be a student member right uh, so once you get the degree you can become a graduate member that is the first step of your uh, chartered qualification so graduate member uh, once you get the graduate member uh, you can uh, use this uh, post nominals gmice okay uh, as an example your name gmice it is just like saying uh, maybe you remember in the IESL or Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka uh, you are having associate membership so you can just put your uh, this post nominals like your name and uh, AMISL in the same way if you get the uh, graduate membership uh, you can put GMICE uh, after your name now if you go to apply now right so they are they are describing how to uh, get all these how to give all these details now these are what you what they require uh, details of your university and certified photocopy of your qualifications like your degree certificates uh, and uh, then the master certificate and things and uh, then uh, you know uh, you have to submit all these things now i'm not going to describe it here because you can just read them uh, then uh, you can fill it right and then you have to make the payment and you can get the graduate membership after getting the graduate membership of course uh, you can go to uh, become chartered okay so that is membership right that is membership now as an example that is civil engineer i inch and c inch now one thing you have to understand is you know in Sri Lanka when it comes to uh, this incorporated engineer the IESL or the institution of engineer Sri Lanka uh, does not offer this qualification the incorporated engineers if you want to become an incorporated engineer the, uh, you have to have uh, like uh, you have to register uh, with the uh, institution of incorporated engineer Sri Lanka there are two organizations here in Sri Lanka that is institution of engineers that is for graduates and institution of incorporated engineers that is for 
diploma holders right but in uh, uk in most of the cases the same institution is offering uh, these two qualifications i inch and uh, c inch right uh, so when it comes to c inch uh, now uh, it is for these people already an experienced civil engineer looking to take your career to the next level proficient qualified with another institution in the uk or internationally just starting out in the industry but anyway uh, what you can do is uh, to get the chartered engineer qualification at least i think you have to have at least three years experience in the field so yeah uh, so these are the things that you want to uh, show them your academic qualifications your work experience and then finally you have to pass your professional reviews okay so uh, in professional review yeah here they are they are giving all these details how to become engineer tech how to become i inch and uh, to become a chartered engineer c inch mice so that is what i am going to focus on right if you have one of the following you already have the qualification you need for c inch and accredited for a integrated m inch degree a bachelor's degree which is accredited as c inch with further learning plus an accredited master's degree now uh, please understand something uh, now when it comes to uh, sri lankan condition uh, isl does not require you to have a master's degree okay with only with the bachelor's degree you can get the uh, isl charter but when it comes to uh, the c inch mice or c in the uk chartered you have to have a master that that is not a compulsory requirement but that is better even if you don't have the master's uh, degree uh, you, uh, if you are only having the bachelor's degree that is also okay but then you have to show you have to show with your experience that you have achieved that knowledge okay so here uh, there you can check your course if, if it course is accredited like uh, then uh, yeah here I don't have a master's degree can I still become chartered yes if you have an accredited undergraduate degree either B inch or BS you can become chartered but you will need to do some further learning or you can use the technical report route oh, that is a different thing and I'm, I'm not going to discuss that thing because that was not the way that I did I did the uh, normal way that is having the master's degree right so then uh, these are some of other details here uh, uh, that if you are working or appre apprenticeships and things but these things of course you can't do here in Sri Lanka they don't have apprent apprenticeships in Sri Lanka right so uh, one very good thing that if you are a uh, qualified I mean if you are an experienced civil engineer what you have to do is of course uh, this career appraisal method okay so you have to follow the career appraisal method so what is this career appraisal method? Career appraisal method is, of course, you know, now uh, you have got the experience to match with their uh, chartered engineer qualifications, right? But uh, you don't have time to, I mean, it is not like having time or something, but just think it is very difficult to find a mentor here in Sri Lanka, right? Uh, to become chartered engineer. Again, uh, they don't have this apprenticeship, apprenticeships programs here in Sri Lanka so if you if you hope to have the UK chartered here in Sri Lanka in civil engineering the best method is to go for career appraisal route right so the career appraisal route means that <coughs> sorry uh, so you are going to give a report you are going to give a career appraisal report such that okay such that you show them you have collected all the required experience to become a chartered engineer is it clear so you are going to show them through a report that you have collected all the experience to sit the professional review examination it is not it is not that you are going to pass the chartered engineer examination through a report you are going to show them you are eligible to sit the chartered engineer examination uh, by help of a report right so uh, now when it comes to uh, ICE charter there are seven attributes that you have to prove 
that you possess. Yeah, I see chart engineer attributes. Okay, so these are the attributes that you have to yeah, see in attributes. Okay, so these are the seven attributes, right? So first one is understanding and practical application of engineering. Okay, and this attribute group is subdivided into many other attributes. Okay, like maintain and extend knowledge of engineering theory and practice and how technology assists its application. Solve engineering problems using sound theoretical approach like that. Then the second one is management and leadership. Okay, so this management and leadership also divided into many subcategories like plan the work and resources needed. So you have to show to your report that you have fulfilled all these attributes. Understand? So you have to show to your report. Okay, so I'll, I'll just tell later how you are going to write the report, right? And then the third one is the commercial ability. Okay, so there you have to show uh, you you are qualified or you you have experience up to their level to manage, prepare, and control cost budgets of engineering tasks or projects like that. So in the commercial ability, these sub attributes you have to show through a report that you have fulfilled. Then health, safety, and welfare. Now remember, health, safety, and welfare are very much important for this charter qualification. Okay, so uh, they pay extra attention on this health, safety and welfare. Now, please understand that I can't say they pay extra attention because all the seven attributes are equally important, right? But anyway, now, you know, uh, if you have, if you have uh, fulfilled all other attributes, but you did, don't have uh, fulfilled this attribute, then you are not going to pass the exam. Okay, so sustainable development. Uh, this is uh, the sustainable development uh, attribute. So how you are going to use the uh, sustainable development? Uh, I mean, how you have fulfilled the sustainable development attribute. And then the sixth one is inter interpersonal skills and communication. Okay, that is so you should be able to use the English language Remember here, communicate well with others at all levels, including effective use of English orally and in writing. Now, there is some star marks uh, saying that is uh, about Welsh language. So, that is the only one that they allow uh, just because of UK law, I think, right? So, but that is not relevant to us since uh, English is familiar to us. We should be able to communicate well with others at all levels, including effective use of English. So, you have to show them to the report and then later they are having... Um, uh, after the professional review examination, they are having another uh, exam called uh, the there is an there is a communication assessment, right? It's like uh, now now I'll um, describe them later. Okay, so communication assessment in the sense uh, they are going to give you some topics or something, and then you have to write and show that you are able to use English language in a professional level, right? And the seven one is seventh one professional commitment. So that is the IC code of conduct, understand the ethical issues, and uh, then identify the limits of their personal knowledge and engage with IC activities, right? So these are the seven attributes that you have to show to a report in the career appraisal that uh, you have to uh, show them to get the uh, get the ability to sit the professional review examination, right? So in my first workshop this is the uh, these are the things that i want to discuss and from the next workshop i'll just describe how you are going to uh, write the career appraisal and what they expect and uh, how you are going to write that right okay thank you very much